So in the last uh, lecture, we discussed celiac disease. Now today we are going to discuss a case of celiac disease. This patient was diagnosed as suffering from celiac disease in 2013 for his classical symptoms of malabsorption. Since then, he is on gluten-free diet and is going fine. He has put up weight and he feels normal. But you see, in the last week, he presented to me with complaint of weight loss of almost 4 kilograms in last two months. There was nothing other significant in his complaints except that he had occasional nocturia. His examination was uh, unremarkable except one persistent feature which persisted throughout the interview which lasted almost 15 minutes. In that I found that he had persistent tachycardia. His heart rate was more than 115 per minute. I checked it twice. It was tachycardia and there was good bounding pulses, but there were no other features of thyroid disease. Anyhow, I requested his thyroid profile, his adrenal assessment, and his blood sugars assessment. Next day he reported his TSH was well below 0 0.001 milli international units per liter while FT3, FT4 were quite elevated. The adrenal profile and the hemoglobin A1C were normal. So this patient was suffering from hyperthyroidism, although there were no other features except there was tachycardia and there was weight loss. So this patient with celiac disease was suffering from hyperthyroidism. Now, when a patient comes to you with celiac disease in your follow-up and he has developed new symptoms, in addition to uh, ruling out the non-compliance with the gluten uh, diet, you should look for the presence of other disorders. Now, the celiac disease is associated with many other disorders. Some of them are quite serious. They can basically be divided into two main groups. One is the malignancies and the other one is autoimmune disorders. autoimmune disorders. Now, what are the different type of malignancies which are associated with celiac disease? <clears throat> the malignancies the non-Hodgkin type of lymphoma it may be intestinal or extra intestinal. It may be both B type or T type of lymphoma. So there may be non-Hodgkin lymphoma which may be intestinal or it may be extra intestinal. The patient may develop adenocarcinoma of small gut or esophagus, malignancy in the esophagus. It may be squamous type and then a patient may have thyroid carcinoma or melanoma. So these are the different type of malignancy the patient may have in association with celiac disease, that is non-Hodgkin type of lymphoma, which may be intestinal or extra-intestinal. It may be of B cell lineage or it may be of T cell lineage. The patient may have adenocarcinoma of the small gut or there may be malignancy in the esophagus, thyroid and melanoma. Then patient may have different type of autoimmune disorders associated with
celiac disease. Celiac disease itself is an autoimmune disorder. And you see different type of autoimmune disorders can be grouped into different type of uh, disease entities. We can see patient may have endocrine problems. These may be like Addison disease. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Patient may have type 1 diabetes. Our patient didn't have any of these. The Addison profile was normal, so was hemoglobin A1C, but the thyroid profile was abnormal and the patient was hyperthyroid rather than patient being hypothyroid because Hashimoto thyroiditis leads to hypothyroidism. Then the patient may have problem with different type of CT or musculoskeletal disorders. For example, patient may have juvenile arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, systemic sclerosis, or Sjogren's syndromes. So patient may have these disorders. And then patient may have conditions affecting the GI tract. GI and liver. The patient may have associated IBS, which is a functional disorder. There may be inflammatory bowel disease. Patient may have autoimmune hepatitis. Patient may have primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. So the patient may have IBS, inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis, or primary sclerosing cholangitis. Similarly, the patient in the nervous system may have multiple sclerosis. While in heart, patient may have dilated cardiomyopathy of idiopathic variety. And in the skin, one thing was melanoma and patient can also have psoriasis. You see, these are different type of conditions which may be associated in patients who've got celiac disease. So when you are following up patients of celiac disease and they have uh, develop new symptoms which cannot be explained simply by the gluten sensitivity, you should look for the presence of other disorders. And as I mentioned, there are two main group of disorders, malignancies or autoimmune disorders. In the malignancies, patient can have non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which may be intestinal or extra-intestinal. There may be small gut adenocarcinoma, or there may be malignancy in the thyroid, esophagus, or patient may have melanoma. And then patient may have multiple type of connective tissue disorders associated with the celiac disease. So uh, when you look for, try to find out if the patient is having some associated condition with celiac disease.